Recurring decimals are amazing because they keep the same pattern going forever and ever. And the way to spot a recurring decimal is that there will be dots above the numbers after the decimal point. Now here we have a dot above the 2 and the 3, which means that this recurring decimal is 0.232323 carrying on forever. Now because those numbers 2 and 3 occur again and again and again, we say they are reoccurring or recurring decimals. In the case of 0 0.6 recurring, there's only one number with a dot, so that would be 0 0.66666 carrying on forever. How about this number down here? Many students don't know this. They'll guess that, okay, there's a dot above the 2 and the 3, so that probably means it's going to be 0 0.2132323. 2, 2, 3, 2, 3. But actually, the dot at the beginning and end of a series of numbers means that that entire sequence repeats itself. So this number, this recurring decimal, would be 0.2132132123, carrying on forever. So everything in between the dots repeats itself as well. The main challenge with recurring decimals is to convert them into fractions. So let's try that with a new number. How about if we had 0 0.21 recurring? And we can tell it's recurring because there'd be a dot above the 2 and the 1. How would we convert that into a fraction? First of all, let's write out the number. So we have 0 0.21 carrying on forever. And what we do, here's the key step. We call this expression x or any letter, anything we want. We can call it button or rabbit, but let's just give it a letter. Let's call it x. There it is. So that expression is x. Now bear with me because this method gets a little bit interesting. Notice there are two dots above the number. Or more importantly, there are two numbers that are recurring. When there are two numbers that are reoccurring, we multiply the expression by 100. So in this case, it would be 100x equals, because we've multiplied both sides by 100. Now, when we multiply this long expression by 100, the decimal place moves twice to the right. If we multiplied it by 10, it would be 2.121212121. But multiplying it by 100, we get 21.212121, etc. Now, why did we do that? Well, notice that the numbers line up nice and neatly. And you might think, well, that's lovely, but how does that actually help us solve the question? Here's the key step, and probably the step that students most often forget or aren't sure how to do. You minus the two equations from each other. So you do 100x, that whole equation, take away this bottom equation. You minus them. What is 100x take away x? That would be 99x. Now, 21.212121, take away 0 0.212121, etc. All the 2s and the 1s would cancel after the decimal point. That's why we lined it up. Notice the 2 minus 2 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, etc but we still have the beginning bit. We still have the 21 take away 0. And 21 take away 0 is 21. And that's basically why we multiply by 100, to get them to line up. Now we have 99x equals 21, but we don't really care about x, because x is just something uh, like a name that we made up. We want to actually know what this expression equals. So to make x the subject, to get it on its own so we can see what we're doing, we divide by 99. So our final answer is x equals, our expression equals, 21 divided by 99. And we can simplify that fraction, divide by 3 to top and bottom. So that would be 7 over 33. So 0 0.21 recurring becomes a fraction 7 over 33. Let's try one more fraction. And let's do, let's convert 
the one we were doing before, not 0.213 recurring into a fraction. Now here, what we need to do is not multiply by 100, even though there are just two dots. Remember, there are three numbers that are recurring, so we would actually multiply by 1,000. In the case of 0 0.6 recurring, there's one number which is recurring, so we multiply by 10. Why do we multiply by 10 here, 100 up here, and 1,000 down here? Because that's the only way to get, this, get the numbers to line up nice and neatly, so that when you minus them, it's really simple and good to do. Let's do the same trick for this number. So we have 0 0.213, 213, carrying on forever. And let's call that y. So y equals all of that. Again, the actual expression doesn't really matter. We can call it any letter we want. Multiplying by 1,000, we have 1,000y. And again, we multiply by 1,000 because there was three numbers which were recurring. 1,000y equals, it would move the decimal point 3 to the right. So that would be 213, 2, 1, 0.213, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3. And if I shift that over a little bit, you can see that the numbers line up perfectly. So when we minus them, the right-hand side just completely cancels out, and you have 213 take away 0, which is 213. Finally, dividing both sides, we have y equals, our expression equals 213, divided by 19, 999. And that is how to convert a recurring decimal into a fraction. One last quick tip though. Occasionally, you will be asked to convert a fraction into a recurring decimal, and the method for that is a little bit different. You might wonder just quickly, what's the point in doing this long x method when we could just call it over 99 or over 999 depending on the number of decimal places. Well sometimes in the exam you're asked to prove that such and such a decimal equals such and such a fraction. So it's really important to know how it works. But let's do that converting a fraction into a recurring decimal. For example 5 divided by 6. How would we convert that into a recurring decimal? It might seem strange but the only, well the best way, I would say, to, to do this, perhaps not the only way, is to use long division. So that's 5 divided by 6. Just because 6 is the bigger number, many students automatically put that inside the box. But in this case, we have 5, the first number, going inside the box, divided by 6, the second number, going outside the box. How many 6s go into 5? 0. We've run out of numbers, so we put a decimal place and we make up a zero. This is uh, just revising long division here. How many sixes into 50? That would be eight, because six times eight is 48, with two remainder. Let's make up another zero. How many sixes into 20? That would be three, with two remainder, because that's 18. Make up another zero, and you can start to see it will repeat itself. It goes in three times, with two remainder, etc. So we can tell our answer to 5 divided by 6 is going to be 0 0.83333. And how do we write that? We can tell it's a recurring decimal because the number 3 occurs again and again and again. But we don't write 0 0.83 with a dot over the 8 and the 3 because that would be 0 0.838383. We write 0 0.83 with a dot over the 3 only. To show that it's 0 0.83333333. To cut a long story short, you now know the method for converting a recurring decimal into a fraction, and the method for converting a fraction into a recurring decimal is to use long division.